the Gibson Executive Guitar Battle. It's going down. Hey, Matthew, this is a important day. This is Thursday. November the 1st, 2018. November the 1st. And this is the first day that the new executive team walks into Gibson, takes full control of the place. In Nashville, and it's also the a formal end to their bankruptcy proceedings that started last May. Okay, so clean slate. New, new balance sheet, whole new day. New team. New team. Do you have the qualifications of this new team? Because the previous team were kind of, well, it didn't work out well in the end. It doesn't appear. Um, well, they've been there 30, yeah, 32 yeah, they, years. They, they kind of did their thing. They yeah. did kind of bring it out of the ashes as far as being sort of a historic core of their products being made again. I believe they paid only $5 million for the Yeah, the so they did well. Yeah. But the new team is going to kind of fix the, the troubled Gibson is the plan. So do we, the question is, do we have any specifics about this new team? Yes, we do. And, we know who and they are. what their credentials are, what their commitment to the instrument is. Yes, yep. They are on record as being uh, fully behind and ready to go to, to revive this uh, iconic American uh, okay. guitar brand and uh, they've uh, are promoting themselves not only as great business leaders as global brand managers with uh, years of experience with top top you know name brands that you'd recognize but also uh, three of the five of the new executive team uh, to self-describe themselves as, as musicians and guitar players musicians and guitar players so this is well, this is what you want to see, right? Right. You know, if you're if you're an executive in an auto company, you want to know I that the know guy, well, the guy's going to drive a car, right? Watch this. Right. 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 No, he's a, maybe uh, they don't have to be professional. Yeah. But, but yeah. You don't want maybe somebody, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Crashing so, a car in uh, on, a, on a race course. In no. That no, that you don't want your executive the... doing that. No, because that would. Uh, Maybe say, do these guys really know what the heck they're doing? Or if you can't really play guitar, would you think, no. do I want to buy a guitar from these guys? No, you don't want a guitar. You, I mean, it's nice to know that the people in charge if you know the product. And what better way to know the product than to play the product of it's a guitar, right? Right. right. So, you, again, you don't want the auto exec crashing the car into a wall. No. You don't want, your, like you don't want your, your guitar exec not able to play the guitar. The The question is, is there any any sort of like, you know, this is the age of YouTube. We're on YouTube right now. Right. Is there any way that we can show uh, what their what their guitar ability is? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. And uh, it, compare that maybe to the previous team. Well, can we do that? Yes. Sort well, of a guitar shootout or a guitar battle between the old team and oh, the new. Oh. Yes, I think I YouTube think, right here in the Throwback Lounge. I think we can do that. I think there there is video I know of, of some members of uh, at least one member of the new team playing guitar, and I know there is some uh, video of the of the mm -hmm. outgoing CEO. So let's yes. find that. All right, let's find it. Let's play it. Let's play it right here for us, the audience, and we're going to see what we can get, take from that. All right, Matthew, you've done some research for us here. We have got video. Of Henry Juskowitz. Juskowitz. The, the outgoing the CEO. The outgoing CEO. Does he still have a job there? Well, that's an interesting uh, point you make because he actually is technically still an employee of Gibson. He uh, He's negotiated to walk away with his salary and benefits. He's still uh, a, a small, small owner. Okay. And, uh, is but he, he in the office? He's not in the office. He is technically on a... An extended vacation. A vac he's on vacation. Okay, so right now you've got you've have found a, a clip. Yes, this is a this is Henry playing. All right, and we'll roll we'll this load. right now. All right, let's have a listen. Sort of 
sounds like uh, me when I first started playing, maybe when I was the, 13. It, it, it's a bit chaotic. A little bit of chaos there. All right, so what do you think we can take? Can we draw any analogy from that clip of Henry Plain? To, is, would it be reasonable to kind of uh, make an analogy uh, of uh, management style, uh, direction of the company? Like, is there really anything we can draw from that with that plane and his leadership? Well, you, could, you can say it was uh, kind, of, kind of punk rock, as it was aggressive. It was chaotic. Chaotic. Going his own way. Going his own way, a little unharmonious. Dam you know, damn the, damn the uh, harmonious uh, uh, note. I don't need uh, structure. structure. I'm doing it my way. Do it your way. You know the path forward. Yeah. Like, and and it does show a level of commitment. He is yeah. committed to the, the direction he's going with that. Yes. And um, I guess if he's playing like that, how long has he been playing? Do we know? know? We don't know. We don't know. The outgoing team headed by him, that's our, that's our so the battle is on now. You, the, the, there's the, the new team plays guitar. So do we have clips of guitar playing? You've looked into this. Well, the, 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 the incoming president self-describes himself as a uh, musician and a guitar player. That's, his name is James Curley. Um, we couldn't find any video of him playing guitar, but I did find some video of him. No video of him playing the guitar? No. No. So if maybe if somebody has something... Yeah, if anyone's got any, we'll, I guess we'd like to see that. Yeah. But we did find some video of him singing, and he's singing unaccompanied... Acapella. Acapella. At the beginning, these are, these are clips taken from... Uh, conferences where he's okay. speaking and he comes out onto the stage. This is meant to inspire. It's like a lean into the show. You're going to hit hit the audience right right at the beginning. Get them involved. Yeah, and show that you know. Show that you enthusiastic and kind of point the direction of the talk. Well, I'm guessing. You say you want a revolution. Well, you know we all want to change the world. He's a revolutionary. He wants to shake things up. He wants to shake things up. That's what we're going to get from this. Oh, man. Imagine if we were just in the world. All right. That's one. That's one. Who is this? What is it? James Gansdale. Okay. Okay. It's a little clip of just "We Will Rock You," so All you right. can maybe hear Brian May coming in right in. Well, that. so far, what can we take from this? There, there is a, um, there's he's he's. Uh, hmm. Let's hear the here. Let's hear another one before we. Come gather round, people, wherever you roam. And admit that the waters around you have grown, but accept it, and soon you'll be drenched to the bone. For if your time, to it's the same. Saving, He's using that same. It's the same beat. Swimming or you'll sink like a stone. For the times they are a changing. Ho, ho, ho. Who wrote that 50 years ago? The, the times they are changing to "We Will Rock You." Yeah, maybe it's a mashup. It's a mashup. Well, he's a so he he wants the poetic aspect of this, but he's gonna pop it up a little bit more. Yeah, he he he's a guy who uh, he's he's wants to focus in on certain things. So he used maybe uh, times are changing. Okay. Revolution is like okay, we got to do things. We got to do things differently. So he's using it as an entree into a talk. Okay. A, maybe it's not really fair. Okay. To, to judge his musical. Town. Well, I don't know. He's in, on a stage <laughs> there singing that. It, yeah. it's, uh, it, it says something about his... Um, uh, chutzpah? Chutzpah? Chutzpah. Chutzpah. Or, uh, I word. mean, you know, nothing wrong with uh, taking the initiative, but maybe it's best to know when the territory is uh, should be explored. Oh, yeah. so I think there's a question as to whether or not he should be going there. But, well, let's see. It's a, it'd be nice to have some guitar clips. Maybe a much better guitar player. Yeah. We, we don't know, though. So. Um, okay, so that's the CEO. Curly... 
James Curley. James Curley. And uh, is it, okay, there's how many people on the executive team for Gibson now? The new ones coming in, there's five. Three, I said, were uh, self-described as... Uh, as guitar collectors, right. players, musicians. Okay. I'm not, these are not my a words. A any these more are... video you have, though, of, of, of uh, someone actually playing the guitar? I have the last little piece of video. I mean, with Facebook, with YouTube, with Twitter, there's got to be something. No, I, I, well, I did a Google search. Okay. So maybe I didn't go on enough to do enough. But anyway, I, I did find one of the new chairman of the board. Okay, this is the chairman of the board for Gibson now. He's just starting today, and his name is uh, Nat Zilka. And Nat used to be in a band in New York City called Red Rooster. And we okay. were able to find some video. And if I can just set it up here, it'll take a second. This is Nat playing lead guitar on this track. If we get into the vocal, he is not singing, but he is playing. And I find it interesting, he is playing a Les Paul. And this is called Christmas Blues, How Red Rooster. How old is this clip? I think it's about 10 years old. Yeah. That sounds the pretty guy good. The guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. Confident. On stage. Yeah. Improvising. Playing a Les Paul. Playing a Les Paul. Chairman of the board. He is chairman of the board as of today. This is your, this is your, the leader of the, uh, he's got to, you got to get stuff past him if he's going to. Okay, so if you're, this, if you're a guitar player. This is what we want to hear from your your chairman of the board. Okay, that was good. Yeah, he's good. I think he's very good. Yeah, that, I'm I'm feel good about that. I mean, if you if 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 we as guitar players, right, we want to buy something, and uh, that I do, uh, you know, I want to know that the guy that the people making it have some concept of what the player wants. Sure. No, if he if he if he's in a uh, if he's looking at a prototype and he picks it up and he'll know I think you know that if it's a quality yeah. instrument or if uh, so I, I guess you got to look at the you got to look at all the costs of doing business but they also have to look at the final product right. and okay that so well good for what's the chairman of the board's name uh, Nat Zilka Nat Zilka good job Nat keep it up so we've kind of established. I think from these clips that, from a player's standpoint, maybe the previous leadership, chaotic playing. New leadership, the one that we heard of, guitar playing, good. Mm -hmm. The CEO singing, I question his judgment, but, but uh, <laughs> you know, he's, he's got the, he's got the uh, initiative. Let's yes. put it that way. He's got an He's initiative. willing to take chances. He's willing to take chances and um, um, present it as if it's the right direction. Right. Let's hope that reality, though, doesn't get in the way. I Do you think, think they're going to quit their day job and go on the road? No, I no. wouldn't. No. No. I'd probably... keep it a hobby. Where does, the, where does the CEO come from? Did you mention this earlier? The, the CEO, his last job was leading another iconic brand to back to glory. Okay. Was uh, the Levi's jean company. Ah, so Levi's. So an kind of iconic, iconic brand. Yeah, that was it kind of an, in hard times. It was being yeah. being uh, beaten up by uh, new brands coming in. And uh, he came in six years ago. and. Yeah, I think he showed me a, um, a clip that has him discussing a wearable jean jacket, uh, electronic wearables incorporated into a uh, Levi's jean jacket. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a case of uh, innovation. So innovation. You, you take an iconic brand. Yeah. And then you add something you to add it that's innovation. never been there before. So like, he, but to me that sounds like the Robo Tuner, mm, possibly. Possibly. I've never seen uh, the, the it, was a, it was an innovation between Levi's and Google yeah, I've never 
Like it just because it can be done doesn't mean it needs to be done. Right. And two, it's a classic. You know, the, what's more classic and simple than a jean jacket? Right. You got a classic design, and now you're adding this layer of complexity to it, and now it's doing something that the classic design was never intended to do. Right. But I don't know. But his 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 argument back to you would be, uh, John. If you just stand still and you don't innovate, you're going to be a thing of the past. Uh, you've got to, you got to move forward. You okay. Gotta... Well, yes. So. Mm. All right. Let's. Uh, well, it'd be inter- it's going to be interesting to see what their take on innovation is. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, in, with Gibson, I don't think the Robo Tuner thing worked out well. Should we offer them some of our consulting expertise? Yes. Uh, totally unsolicited. Absolutely. All right. Because the guitar players, if they know anything, they know. Do you have anything you want to add first? How any uh, how a guitar? Yeah, I mean, be uh, really, every a guitar. Everybody point. knows what they'd like to see. Sure, and it, I think this is kind of like the uh, entertainment on forums. Is the you know every big guitar player knows first of all that Gibson's doing everything wrong, and then second of all, they know exactly what Gibson should exactly. do. Exactly. If they only would listen to me, yeah, so. everything would be just fine. So. Yeah, we, we we make guitar electronics, so we maybe we've got a little bit of a Bias insight there, into this, yeah. right? Well, I'll I'll pick up on what uh, James Curley, the new incoming president, would was probably going to tell people today in Gibson. I'm sure there was a meeting, and he met with probably as much of the staff as he could, and he's going to give a talk. I suppose he led it with with uh, we will rock you. We will rock you. But I bet you one of the things that he talked about was that hey. We've got a 116-year-old history here. We're an iconic brand, and we're going to... Today's a new day, and we're going to bring this brand back, and we're all on this big team together, and we're, we're going pep forward. Talk. Sure, It's a big pep talk. It's pep a big talk. day for them. And they've been through a rough patch, let's face yeah. it. They've had some tough times going back a few years. and Set the tone, positive tone. Yeah, and I think that's what Curly comes in doing. He is a kind of a positive guy. He's going to be, that, be pushing that. That is important. I do agree with that. So he's yeah. going to... But he's going to tell them. He's going to say, "Listen, we're an iconic brand, but we're also we're going to we're going to do things. Once we stabilize the company, we're going to innovate. We're going to do some things a little differently." So I was going to ask you mm. if you could be uh, a consultant for a day. Mm. What would you tell? And you had uh, J. C. Curley's ear for uh, an hour. What would you uh, oh. What would you tell him? What, what can well, you do? I one thing I would do. Now, so we've to discuss this, and if Fender is correct about the fifty percent women, yeah. Well, um, what do you mean, fifty percent? Fifty percent women, a new fifty uh, percent of new guitar players for Fender products apparently are women. I don't know if that includes ukuleles or not, mm-hmm. but if that's true, then I think that well, even among men, um, a lighter guitar is often desirable, and I would think with women it would be maybe doubly so because. Just a small, you know, generally smaller sort of build. And um, so I think this is an opportunity to make a USA made line of Epiphone as a, bring Epiphone back as USA made, mm-hmm. have some of the classic designs like a Wilshire, like what I got right here, like an Epiphone Newport Deluxe that you're playing. This is a 63, I think. This is a really co- cool, super light, short scale bass. They do do a re-release overseas made of these. Oh, not this one exactly, but you know some of these. But they don't have the professional grade of a USA made one. Right. They really don't. They're nice. They're a good deal. But so I think that's an opening. Bring back USA made Epiphone, and have it be a regular product offering, and also use it as a uh, as an opportunity for new designs. What do you think about that? Maybe, maybe like a, uh, like bringing like Ray Dietrich. Maybe people who know who Ray Dietrich was. He was was the, is that the Firebird design? No, Who's I your... believe it was the Firebird. Okay, yeah, bring in an outside designer with a uh, that that's what they do. They design cool stuff. He was an auto designer, I believe. Yeah, and you bring him in, say we've got some ground rules for this. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to have the sort of design elements of a classic Gibson. So it's got to be an ABR1 bridge. It's got to be a stop tail, if that's what it requires, or a wraparound. It has to use pickups from our line here, or it has to have visually that uh, 
sort of same configuration. We use classic tuners. Uh, maybe it has binding, maybe it doesn't, but if it has binding, it's going to be along the lines of all of the classic des designs that they have. Don't try to add some new electronic thing to it. Right. Gibson actually tried this in the 60s. There's all sorts of variations. I think maybe even of these new ports that have fuzz circuits in it oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They're just oddball stuff. People don't want it then, and I, I don't think they want it now. You can add that in with your pedals. Yeah, but you want a... So the idea would be bring a designer in, say, I want something with a design aesthetic of our golden era, of the most desirable collectible stuff. Uh, it's got to have these common elements. Other than that, make us a guitar, you know. And uh, but keep it in when you're making it, when you're designing it, it's it needs to have, it needs to be the the '60s '50s era guitar electric that Gibson left on the drawing board. So maybe you only need to hire like a designer or like like an architect. They're really yeah. worried about the shape. They're not too worried about all the guts that go into it. If they get the shape right yeah. and people see that shape and they go, oh, I like it immediately, then all that other stuff kind of comes later. Maybe. Yeah, you have Gibson sort of right now devoted to the, their existing designs. Yeah. You know? And so maybe Epiphone USA maybe would be, you could do this with Gibson also, you know, have new designed guitars. I, I don't think you could, would it need to exclude that. But Epiphone's more of a clean slate. Yeah. And you could probably do something with Epiphone and it wouldn't be uh, rejected out of hand. People yeah. You wouldn't feel that you're destroying the. No, no. The, the, the no, brand by and introducing. And these new. guitars, you know, from the 60s, uh, Epiphone. They're made in Kalamazoo. These are high quality instruments, although maybe marketed towards students. They, like this has a mother pearl inlay, they're high quality instruments. So it's not like it's really a, uh, it's not like you're taking a hit on quality or features. You're just getting a different design. All right, so is, is that do it for our, uh, our Gibson, uh, new Gibson executive team rundown here? I don't know if you want to talk about uh, other kind of buzzwords that uh, some of these brand managers like to sure. throw around. A little buzzword that the brand manager type people like to throw around is accessible, but then you also have the aspirational product. So the accessible product oh. is the affordable standard, oh, the guitar or product that is you know everywhere and it's easy to get. And then there's the aspirational. The aspirational one. Okay, got it. So, so. so in in the Pri priced only for an exclusive few yeah features that only you only most can people can mostly just dream about right them. so i'm gonna i'll throw two examples at you when when uh, james curley was president of levi's he created the aspirational levi's pair of jeans you can Got go it. and get a custom pair of jeans made they're fitted for you you choose the fabric count the, yeah. the thread count you, you choose the stitching and uh yeah. They'll cost you seven hundred and fifty bucks. Would you buy that pair of jeans? I wouldn't. So I did. I did a little bit of math, and I said, "Okay, what <clears throat> would the aspirational Gibson guitar cost if those jeans cost seven hundred fifty dollars?" So okay. I came up with a a Les Paul, let's say, that around the using the same kind of math figures and ratios, it's a fifty thousand dollars aspirational Les, Les Paul. Paul. Would you buy that guitar? I I can't. And you'd be <laughs> able to. You'd be able to pick. Everything no, about it. I, I no, no. But if if I had the available cash and the, I, I'm a committed guitar enthusiast and money is not an issue, I guess you would. You're, you're you a, could. You're a, a, a hedge a fund hedge manager. Or a hedge fund manager. Hedge, a hedge, hedge fund funds. manager. You and you uh, you've got everything except for that. Yeah. yeah. You probably would. And there are people like that. So, and uh, more power to them. But. Uh, I couldn't be. I'm not one of those. So, what, but uh, what, what yeah. if what if they took you and brought you and you got to see the, you got a trip. They flew you into Nashville. This is included. Okay, in the price. they fly me to Nashville. Fifty thousand dollars. I get the guitar. I get to make all of the specs exactly yeah. as I want. It's made for to, me. I can even go over there and like you feel the, the wood before it's put together. You choose it. You go into the, like okay. the vault. I want this wood. <clears throat> they mark it. They yeah. uh, and then uh, you say well. Uh, you know, I'd really like uh, 
a guitar lesson from Slash, and I'd like him to hand oh, it's deliver It's going to be that like the Slash lesson. Appetite for Destruction uh, yeah, guitar, let's say whatever it is. You're a Guns N' Roses fan. It, and it, Slash is going to, well, it's going to, it's got to meet Slash's approval too. Yes. It's got to, it's got to clear the Slash uh, yeah, crossbar there. It's got to be at his standard. That would be cool. And Slash is there when you get it, and he gives you what? You get a, he gives you your guitar. You, and you meet him, and you, he gives you, uh, you get to have like maybe, let's say, a guitar lesson for an hour. So you get oh, to hang out. Yeah. Now, that's it's looking more attractive, isn't it? So, At 50,000, that's a pretty cool experience. Yeah. All of a sudden, it takes on, it's something you're going to remember. Yeah. Obviously, forever. You're not gonna Yeah, that's sounding pretty good. But you know the first thing that happens once they get it home? They call up Throwback, and they want to change the pickups. Well, you can always improve. You can improve it's, upon it's, greatness. It's going to happen. I, trust me, it will happen. So that leads into our next question. Will Will Gibson phone us here at Throwback uh, and say, "We want to use we your pickups. We want our machines back. We want our. Well, first of all, they're ours. But you can't have them. Then back. I can't have no. them. Um, and you know they should have kept them. We yeah. make we use them to make cool pickups every day. Haste makes waste. They have called us for custom shop stuff in the yes. past. Yeah. Um, seems unlikely. Seems unlikely. Though. Seems unlikely, but who knows? Well, let's just say I'm if they that. did phone us yes. and they put an order in for, let's say, I don't know, let's say a hundred pairs of oh, uh, sure. buckets, would that be a problem? No. We could get that. Literally done. every part of it, as you know, is made with our stuff, tooling, bombs, everything. Yes, we can do that. So I guess there is a precedent for this. They have these. Uh, Ron Ellis, Leroy Parnell yeah. ones for a, um, I guess, a artist requested. But, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. No you know problem. we can do it. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. No issue. That's actually kind of one cool stu thing about uh, our stuff is that uh, from the beginning, I, I thought, I don't want this sort of endless back order deal. Because you see other guys had that, <clears throat> and it never seems to work out well. So getting stuff made in time is the way we do it and we we do this for Collins and other guitar makers getting them done on time meeting production schedules no problem this may be very sensitive but i thought i would ask this okay, question this we don't know if we can mention this is this we're going to see if this fit, we can fit this into the show you're a little afraid that we may be stepping on some toes here yes okay upsetting some people so i don't want to do that okay but uh, my question was do you think gibson maybe an unexpected thing would Gibson return to Michigan, the place you of mean, their birth? Would they would they come back to Kalamazoo? Wow! And maybe 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 they wouldn't purchase Heritage outright. Maybe they would say, "Hey, there's room enough for both of us." But they would, or maybe they would buy the. But they'd out make right something now. out of the old building, the historic building. Yeah, I mean, I believe they've saved that smokestack that said Gibson on yes. it. Yes. So. Well, does it seem likely? It seems unlikely, but imagine you've got your fifty thousand less Paul. Dollar less well right. or whatever it is, your what did they call it? That sort of uh, the aspirational the aspirational guitar made in the Kalamazoo factory. Right. You go there, you get to have whoever slash hand it to you. Get a guitar lesson in the building. Yeah. And it's just devoted to that. Just the the, the super high end. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You might actually be able to pay for that pretty darn quick. It, it, knowing that this is a, you know, guitar is this iconic yeah. pop symbol around the world. And you've got Les Paul's vintage ones going for, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're museum pieces. What better way to get your aspirational guitar than to pick it up in a museum? No, but if you think about that, if you, if you said this Les Paul is made in the old factory and... There is equipment at Heritage, like the, the, the machines that glue the bodies together, the hold the, the bodies together. That never left the factory. So there, there is equipment there that is original. Actually, we have video of the old, old factory that we, went, we took a tour right before they were going to clear everything out and fix it up. Yeah, they're going to renovate. And we have a video of you in the restroom. <laughs> that that restroom, restroom was is the most memorable restroom I've ever been in. Yeah, that, we'll they'll show that. The rest it's of, horrifying and uh, intriguing and definitely historic. It was an historic. That restroom. is gone. It was it was a relic. 
A relic's <laughs> restroom. It is the first. It, maybe Tom Murphy did something in there. <laughs> but if you miss that bathroom, you've missed something. Yeah. I, I years ago went there and had to go to the bathroom, and they said there was one. Uh, uh, they upstairs. Upstairs, and I went to that when I was like locked, and it was like it wasn't much better then. Yeah, no, same, same. I remember they said it was upstairs, oh. and then yeah, I hit a search around and find it. Yeah, and, they were like, and I've got one of the booths too, the spray booth. I'll show that real quick. But that stuff's been kind of like renovated, right? Yeah, I think we're almost but, done with renovations. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen it since. But the it, exterior of that building at 225 Parsons, it's, that's a yeah. building from the turn of the century. I mean, yeah. So it's just over 100 years old now. Yeah, and at the time it was considered sort of like a, uh, a marvel of modern manufacturing with yeah. the, the big windows and the daylight and the dust extraction and all this stuff. But yeah, okay. Well, yeah, maybe maybe they'll buy it. I don't know. It seems unlikely, but maybe someone forward-thinking who wants to rock us and uh, won't let it go blowing in the wind. <laughs> okay. All right. Does that do, do it, you think, that's for that it. show? I that's, think it. that's it. That covers all I think we topics. covered it all exhaustively. We're probably exhausted from it. Well, if you like the show, Matthew, did that go well for you? Yes. Yes. Okay. We survived. Good. If you like the show, click like. And if you have questions or comments, leave those, please. Uh, the phone's ringing, but I'm going to keep going. If uh, <laughs> if you uh, want to subscribe, click subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, click the uh, the bell if you want uh, notifications of future videos. And once again, thanks for letting Throwback be part of your search for great guitar tone. Thank you.